Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier. The DRF Bets race of the day for Friday, March the 16th, race number seven at Aqueduct. If you sign up for a new DRF Bets account, you will be rewarded with a $150 bonus. DRF.com forward slash join is where you need to go. Please type in the promo code TV150. Let's take a look at this field at the Big A. We are traveling six and a half furlongs. It's an optional claiming race before we get started. Two points of business. First of all, you can access free formulator past performances from this race on the race of the day event page at drf.com if you're watching on youtube be sure to like this video subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on our latest race coverage morning line favorites the number four angry moon mat six to five on the morning line but we'll take the field in post position order we'll begin with wake up in malibu second to a sharp horse last time out yeah, I was going to say Harlan Punch came back to win a little stake with a 105 buyer most recently. You see how spread out that field was. It wasn't a big field, but you had four lengths between Harlan Punch and this horse and then another eight and a half back to the third place finisher, Papa Shot. Um, I'm going to be fascinated to see where he's positioned early on this turn back from a mile to six and a half. I would imagine he's not going to make the front in here with a horse like Angry Moon present, but I can't imagine him coming from too far out of it. I agree. He can be close to the pace. He's a tactical horse. And I thought he did a lot of dirty work last time out in that Harlan Punch race. It was a similarly short field to the one he's facing on Friday. There were a couple of horses battling it out for the lead. Wake up in Malibu, mid-moved three wide, eventually dispatched to those horses, and then just couldn't hold off Harlan Punch. And you mentioned how sharp Harlan Punch has been. He's a logical contender, five to two on the morning line. The number two is Loki's Vengeance. Where is he from his form standpoint? He returned off a long layoff, first time Linda Rice, and he kind of bombed against Gold for the King in the New York Stallion Series, and then he disappeared again, so only one race since May. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. I gave him a shot in that race back in November. He was terrible that day, and now we're gone off another long layoff. He's run once in about, what, 10 months, so I don't know what you're going to get out of him. Linda usually does well with horses like this off this kind of layoff, but at the same time, I don't know if he can run anymore. He's a horse that can be close to the early pace, as we see from the Timeform U.S. pace projector. Our friends at Timeform U.S. have Loki's Vengeance sitting second. That blue bar indicates that this race might favor horses on or near the early lead, so perhaps a little bit of an advantage for Loki's Vengeance. The horse that finished first in the New York Stallion Series, Gold for the King, came back to run second in the Safe Florida Sandy for New York Reds with a 90 one buyer speed figure. Ostrolenka, the number three, might be up against it from a pace standpoint. This horse won the Hudson Handicap back at Belmont on October the 21st on New York Showcase Day, but three starts from this form cycle for David Jacobson. He just has not looked like that same horse. Yeah, I suppose if you want to try to make some sort of a case for him that he's going to start rounding back into better form. The two most recent races, both on muddy tracks, you see he's 0 for 8 lifetime on a wet surface. The return effort at Parks was a disaster. He didn't pick his feet up that day either. If you think he can get back to what he was over the summer and into the fall of 2017, he certainly is interesting in here. It's just, boy, you're going to have to get a number on here. And usually, we, we've made note before, when Jacobson's horses don't get bet, that's usually not a good thing. It is interesting to note that, and I think you mentioned a very good point about the wet tracks in the last two races. And the race three starts back while well, the track was listed as fast. That was just running an absolute driving snowstorm, won by a solid horse in Someday Jones. Second time blinkers for Ostrolenka in here. Really the key to the race is the four angry moon because Timeform US has him on an easy early lead. Uh, it pre-projects to be the controlling speed, and he's been in against some good horses. Skyler's Scramjet, do share in his last couple of races, so perhaps a little Little bit of a hidden class drop and the second start of the form cycle. Lots to point to Angry Moon at six to five on the morning line, but he hasn't won a race in a long time. You know what? That's the thing. As logical as he is, and all the positives that are there, like you say, a little bit of class relief, likely to make the front end. You get Paco, who's a real serious sort of front running rider. For some reason, he just doesn't seem to be able to get over the hump, and you don't have to go that far back. You see the names like Ostrolenka finishing ahead of him. You see Candid Desire finishing ahead of him. I think he's the horse to beat in here, but I don't know that I would want him at something close to the even money, which I'd imagine he's going to ultimately go off at. I was a little disappointed that he didn't change leads in the stretch last time out. That was not an issue for him. Two starts back when run down by Share, but Skyler Scramjet, who beat him, came right back to win the graded Tom Fool last week with a 103 buyer. You'll know Angry Moon early. You'll probably know him in the top of the stretch, and he's probably the horse to run down. Saratoga Gyro is just a rock-solid little fella. He won two starts back 
back with a 91 buyer speed figure. Nice ride from Jeremy Rose that day, getting off the rail at a crucial juncture, turning into the stretch, and then running down the speeds. And then last time out in the Holly Hughes, he was just in against a razor sharp horse in my boy Tate. Yeah, and my boy Tate has really turned into a serious New York bred. He's just on an absolute tear right now. I, I also think that Holly Hughes, it felt like the pace held up for the most part. You see that middle fraction, they had that color coded as blue as far as time form US is concerned. I guess the question with this horse is, is he actually this good? Because he's facing some really good horses, and he does have a couple of 90 plus buyers on his page, but most of them against lesser fields. If you think he can stand that class sort of hike, and I guess this is kind of a middling ground between that most recent run and what he's going to face here on Friday, then maybe he's interesting, but I can understand anyone that says he's just not this talented. There are worse long shots in the world than number six, Candid Desire. I, I think you can actually say that he's a bit dirtied up. He had no shot at 100-1, to 1, obviously, last week in the Tom Fool. Two starts back, he caught a wet track, and this horse just cannot stand up on wet going. Three back, he finished right behind Angry Moon with a rail rally and an optional claiming race. The problem is he seems pace dependent, and he might not get enough pace to rally into this time around. 100% agree with all that. I feel like he's the kind of horse in a race like this, the pace is going to work against him so significantly, at least it looks like it's going to on paper, that he's probably best used underneath. He's going to come with a run. Maybe he can get a small award, but uh, the way it looks on paper, I, I just have a hard time making him on top. Let's take a look at who you did make on top in race number seven at the Big A on Friday. You're going to go with Saratoga Gyro, the number five, and boy, he is an absolute hard hitter. I like that this is his third start of the form cycle, and he can adapt to the pace scenario time form us has him relatively close and i think he could work at a trip similar to the one he received two starts back that's the big thing for me i just felt like that most recent run he was a little bit too far out of it the race never really came back to him those runners just stayed on one two and three the run two back he didn't beat a very good field you know mighty zealous was in there he came back out with a 73 buyer the third place finisher one next out with a 77 so he's certainly been facing a little bit lesser when he does his best running but at the same time if he trips out i think he's going to get lost in the shuffle i don't think a lot of people are going to look at him and say prime win contender maybe you get five six to one on him and i think he has every Every, every right to run one of his better races. And he is 5-1 to one on the morning line. I don't mind the cutback for the one wake up in Malibu. He has one going six furlongs. He has one going seven in his career. Uh, he has enough speed, I think, to keep the expected pace setter and expected favorite somewhat honest in the early portion of the race. There are no Harlan punches in here. And it seems like Jacobson has gotten wake up at Malibu back in good form. He's my top pick. One, four, five, and six in the Friday DRF bets race of the day. Again, if you are signing up for a new DRF Bets account, there's the deal, a $150 bonus. DRF.com forward slash join. Use the promo code TV150. Approximate post time for race number seven at the Big A on Friday, 425 Eastern. Good luck.